Say hello again. I'm Chad Carney. I'm a diving instructor. Been doing that since I was a teenager almost. And uh, diving a lot all over. And I got into the whole sport because of spear fishing. This that you just received, just to point out the lionfish that are on there, this is one of our new targets. And there's more people that are getting into, into shooting something because of these, you know, uh, non-indigenous fish that are coming in and eating up all of our, you know, local fish. And I'm kind of tickled about that because it used to be, like Chiefy was talking about sometimes, spearfishing with a black sheep or something like that until people realize that we really are very selective and we, we don't take many fish by comparison to other methods, certainly not commercial. But these guys are great eating too. And there's a misconception that they're poisonous. They're not. We're going to be doing a lionfish uh, tournament coming up pretty soon. It's on our website on the newsletter if you click on that. And we'll be doing a, a seminar on this about how not to get stung by them. They're not poisonous, but they are venomous like a wasp. You know, they have a stinger. And so that's basically the spines that are on there. So you just shoot them and then cut them off. You can definitely avoid them. I've been doing about oh, 100 plus lionfish kills already. They're great eating. They taste just like another fish I'm going to show you in a second. And I just mow them down, cut off all the spines, and then keep right on going. So it's a pretty cool uh, thing that we're doing, and we're helping keep that amount of fish out of the area. Uh, so that's a neat thing. Uh, this is the fish that they taste just like. Okay. And what, what fish is this? Hogfish. Hogfish. Some people call them hog snapper, but they're actually a wrasse. But that's just because fish houses wanted to sell them. Hmm? Okay, so they wanted to sell them as a snapper, and if they took the head off and all of that and just had the fillet with the skin on there, it looked just like a red snapper. It was, and it's really, really good, too, if you haven't had them. Best thing about a, a hogfish is this picture right here in this flyer I put up about a spearfishing class has. Um, boyfriend and girlfriend that came over to my coast and I taught them how to spearfish out on my boat and they shot several of these real nice ones you know said so that they're um, one of the dumbest fish out there. <laughs> okay. usually dumb fish are not good eating usually they're just you know kind of ugly and not good eating but the hogfish is a beautiful fish just like the lionfish and they both are fantastic eating so thank goodness for hogfish another thing is they don't let's say rarely ever they have been caught on hook and line by people who are using, you know, like special tactics with shrimp, you know, in the right place, that kind of thing. But they chew corals and stuff mostly, and so largely they're just not taken by that huge number of other fishermen that are out there. So there's a lot more of these that we can go after. And they'll be probably the first one that you'll be plinking at, and he may even give you a second chance after you ding him, you know, or mess cold turkey, and he looks at it, and then he goes over here, and he gets it. It's just a really wonderful fish that we have something that is that not with it. Okay, now I'm going to pick up speed. Major difference between doing a seminar like this and doing the classes that we do is hands-on, you actually handle all this equipment. Um, but I'm just going to show you what they basically are. The simplest piece of equipment that's out there to shoot fish is called a pole spear. Now a lot of people see the sling on this and they go, oh, that's a Hawaiian sling. But it's not. It's a pole spear. There is a sling that you put your hand in like this, and it's pretty much like shooting pool more than anything else as far as what you've ever done with things. You slide this up on the pole, you give it a little twist if you got a skinny one especially, because they can actually bow a little bit and do a little of that. And then you just, I'm going to move this way because I think it might be the best direction. I'm not going to shoot it very far at all. But basically, you run your hand way up if you're trying to get a lot of power. You release it, and it's going to come out pretty quick. See, so it's just boom, and it sticks. And this is a paralyzer point, and this is another thing that actually comes on many of the uh, poles and stuff. And this one's got these little hooks on there that are really holding it on at the moment. I should be able to get it. There we go. It's nothing but a piece of aquarium hose. And it's got two little, you know, kind of hook like uh, pieces, barbs almost. And this one spreads as it hits the fish, and it takes a wide area, and it hits them with a lot of smack too. So that's a good piece to use. Interesting thing about pole spears is that there's no safety, there's no complication. It's just don't point it at something, you're not going to hit it. You know, the other position you carry poles and guns and things is points up when you're in the boat most times so that you know they're completely I walk in here with five guns sometimes in seminars and I'm walking along like this and I got all the points I even picked up a guy in a Zodiac four miles south of the Tortugas on his way to Cuba or wherever and I had to hold all these guys guns 
in the Zodiac in three to four foot seas while the captain drove the boat back and we picked up these two guys. So I'm holding the points so that it doesn't puncture the thing is actually saving us. The Zodiac, you know? <laughs> but you can do that. So pole spears are really cool. Neat thing about where you cannot use them, as uh, Jim mentioned, is in the Bahamas you can't use anything with a trigger and you can't use scuba. No trigger and you can even shoot lobsters there. So the laws are different. That's one of their major industries and so we are allowed to do that if we're free diving. So pole spears are cool. Another thing about them, you know, this is just a short one because I didn't want to have a lot of big stuff in the room, but uh, this has a lot more smack than a short gun. Little tiny guns don't have much, you know, and they're real inexpensive and you can hit stuff real hard. There's also no other type of piece of equipment that you can shoot and that dumb hog fish moves over there and you shoot again. Oh, wait a minute, third time. <laughs> Just boom, boom, boom. You can really shoot a lot with these guys. So they're good for low visibility, too. What they're not good for is very much range. Even when they're long, when they get really long, they get unmanageable. It's way too much out there. I had a nine-footer that we made up custom. ended up tipping it in half and using it as a shorter one. So there is something else that you can use over there that has no trigger. And you can use these things right here. In fact, many people will tell you, get a pole spear, get a true Hawaiian sling, which is a slingshot basically, uh, and shoot these before you get yourself a gun because you'll have to learn to stalk your fish more and you won't have as much range as you do with big powerful guns. Uh, and this of course also can go to the Bahamas. But guys that have, there's a lot of guys shooting really big pole spears now too. But this device is basically a slingshot. You put it in the heel of your hand, you grab this very similar to you might do a bow and arrow. You point your finger down that thing and when you pull it back, you're going to be able to fire this free spear very far underwater. I'm holding things up and over here because you're not over there. But I would be actually vertical and pointing down. Gravity helps you out, gives you more speed. These are a quarter inch, very fast. We call them speed shafts. There are 930 seconds, and then there's finally the 516s that are also used, so you have more weight, more hitting power. But you can really shoot this pretty far. Uh, Jim mentioned a guy named Mark Pinder. They call him the King of Sling, and he has a book out that's really awesome. It's a guy I met many years ago. You have an opportunity to even meet him. He's 84 years old, just had a birthday. And he shot and won national tournaments along with his two brothers twice as national champions with slings while free diving against guys that had, oh, they were easily 40 year spans in age. And also those guys were using high powered long range guns. And yet these guys just took them out. And I found out why they're so good. I thought I knew how to use them too. And then he showed me that I didn't. You know, and he taught a friend of mine how to do it. Is that you, you're very connected to this piece of equipment. It's a part of you. And so you really feel when you shoot it, you can turn and make changes. He shot a sailfish. They shot those Goliaths back when they were legal. He shot sharks, anything and everything. I mean, they're very effective. So Hawaiian slings, very cool piece of equipment. A little harder to get used to because the two pieces do come apart. And so you're going to find a, whoops, there goes the spear, and I'm going to have to make a dive just to get that. This floats, which is okay because you're free diving, you know, that it goes up like that. And we just kind of loop it on our arm like that if we're underwater if we need to hold on to it. But you don't want to be doing that when you're coming up. It'll come right off of there. Okay, so you got to hang on to them. Those are the simplest ones. So if you miss, how far is that going to go? <laughs> it's going to go right into the bottom you were pointing at is the main question that people ask is how far is it going to go? You're not shooting out into the blue okay. pretty much ever. Okay. The real, you know, Jim was talking about being above all the time and like when he was talking about his buddies in a hole trying to get a fish out and he's above, he's also backing him up because all of a sudden the fish goes squirting out, your buddy's in there, he didn't see it go. You know, he's in there digging and scratching and all this stuff flying out and everything attracts other fish. The guy up above doing nothing has a great view. I was diving with Pavan not long ago and he shot a hogfish and went up in in one spot and he created a pretty big stink, pinning it down and a lot of kicking of smoke, we call it, on the bottom. And there wasn't another fish that came in, but I was hanging back high, kind of away from it so I wouldn't be spooking anything that came around. A little grouper, well, grouper were out. But hogfish come in or a mutton snapper is what I was hoping for or something like that. Whenever he, anyone grabbed the lobster, same situation. You hang back and you wait and you see what you can pick off. And of course you would never swing the gun anywhere near them. But, you know, you have very long accuracy and when you hold one of these things out, you can see that I'm way away from you guys. You know, like I'm shooting way over here. You know, so there's no issues with safety in that regard. Now here's the next piece of equipment. This is an A.B. Biller spear gun and I took the line off as you know, you saw me when I first came in. The reason I did that is I wanted to show you that it shoots just exactly like 
the blind sling in that it's a free shaft. And your question was, what about the spears and how far do they go? The two spears I have in my free shaft gun right now, and I shoot that way probably 95% of the time, I've had them for about four years. I've never lost one of those spears. Now, I do, on occasion, get a little bit um, gutsy and try for fish I shouldn't be trying for. Hogfish and groupers like you showed you and snappers are bottom fish. They live in the reef. They're not leaving it. So even a huge grouper, like the ones Pinder shot and these others, will rock up. If you're a hook and line fisherman, you know what I'm talking about. You hook them and they go right into the holes. And so you're going to be able to shoot fish like that and they'll go in the hole. You may already know where it is because you had to stalk him to get the shot. And that fish goes in there and then you have another spear with you. You have a buddy with you and even lights and we carry some guns that carry as many as three spears on there. You get real practice at it. You can fire the first one, pop a second one in in a matter of seconds and just boom, take out the fish with your own backup shot. So let's go forward a little bit further. These things have nothing but a barb on them. They often call this a Hawaiian flopper. If it's hanging, that's the way it is. This one's actually on top, so it would be a Tahitian flopper. But these are shot in all guns. Now I'm going to give you just a few of the things you do with guns. You've got to load them first. The safety that you talked about is right here like that. So you flip it on safety. And this is not glass, but again, this is a hip loader because it has this extension. So I would then grab a hold of this bottom band and I would bring this down, but not just like that. I'd be bringing the muzzle down as I do it. See how I get a really good power situation there? I'm not going to really load it in here. Then I would do the second one right after that. Then you extend completely, and this is the biggest part, the reason he kind of said there's an issue with using safeties. There's a fish! Damn! And you gotta do this, and then boom, and the fish is gone, unless it's a hogfish. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you take the safeties off when you've banded up the gun, and you're ready to fire, or so close, you even know that everything's good to go real soon, you're gonna pull one time, Boom, it's gonna become a hand-eye coordination thing like guys shooting those three-point baskets. Those guys don't think about those shots. They're on or they're off because they've got that coordination going or they don't. There's some guy out there, I've never got his name, but I've seen the video many times, and even on uh, the internet now, and his wife flips up an aspirin and he shoots it out of the sky with a bow and arrow. I couldn't even see the aspirin. But he does this boom, every time and asks him how does he do it, and he just goes, had a bow and arrow all my life. You know, I can hit anything with it. You know, he walks around with it. He probably had it in, in the womb with him, you know. But anyway, loaded gun now. So you are absolutely never pointing it anywhere near anybody. You've got to turn around where these people all are. Most of the time, that's when we would drop it down because we're underwater. We do it like this. And we're over here. And now we read, you know, because I've got to turn around a lot. You should always be doing this look around game. And like Cobia and other fish will come up on your, your fins. And it's like, whoa, i got to get that fish and just a little back away, you know, shot. But uh, that's what you're doing with those things. But uh, basically the firing is with a locked elbow most of the time. You can back up your second hand. Some guys do it like this, whatever. It's going to kick. you got a lot of power on these things. You can have more even with thicker bands. Bands are made of latex materials. There are, uh, I brought one other one over here that's three quarter inch. These are nine sixteenths, and there's five eighths in between. It makes a big difference on the power. Free shafts can shoot a long, long way. The reason for free shaft guns is that there's almost no drag. That one little flopper, and that's it. So a shot that's 30 feet is possible and more, especially with a lot of gravity. Most line guns won't go but three times the length of the spear. This one's called a 48, so that's about 12 feet. But by free shaft, you can oftentimes double or even triple that if you're powered right for it. So it's one of the unique things you can do with these. Guns do float, by the way. And if you shoot that nice fish and you're all excited and everything, and then you're looking for it later, about 10 minutes later, and you realize, oh my goodness, it floated away. Now it's down current somewhere. A lot of guns probably wash up on beaches, you know. But uh, if you do this, you can keep them with you. Or really, more importantly, we usually weight the gun. You know, here temporarily or in here with weights if you're wanting to be using it as a, a bottom gun all the time. Free divers don't usually because they're up with the gun all the time. So that's another way to do that. Okay. So there is free shafting and there's all kinds of controversy about how well that all works. And now what I'm going to do is show you another gun because it's all put together.